Why nuclear energy? Why melting salt reactor? And why thorium? And last but not the least, why China is the first one to eat the crap? That's Chinese saying. Chinese Academy of Sciences has begun an effort to develop what they call TMSR, Thorium Molten Salt Reactor. It's along these same lines, and they are well-funded and well-staffed. We used to have a dream, if we can produce a clean electricity, then we can drive our electrical car. However, as of today, it's all gasoline cars, so it makes our job even impossible. We need a revolutionary something happen. It's very compelling work. The Chinese are definitely in the lead right now on this. The white thorium. Why MSR? Low pressure here, more safety. We also end up with the high temperature. We need high temperature. Then we can convert the CO2, which is not the waste at all. It's a, it's a raw material for our chemicals, in fact. We need the energy to convert them, but we need the high temperature. China export. A lot of the energy here in China is not for consume, it's for production. We saw the other day how electrical power was used to make steel from recycled materials. We load scrap into large haul trucks and they back up into this bucket and dump scrap inside. A lot of energy consumption is largely industrial processes unbelievably optimized process. There's not the same room for improvement. The nature of waste heat doesn't lend itself very well to conventional Rankine cycles. We probably captured 90% of what's to be captured. Chasing the last 10% is pretty expensive. Those operations couldn't proceed if they thought in two hours they might or might not have power. They would not be able to make steel that way. They have to have reliable energy sources. So you've been able to drop your power consumption per ton almost about a third, it looks like. Probably since the, uh, the mid, early 80s. So besides your scrap material input, what's your next largest cost on production? Electricity. Electricity. This is a recycling facility. An electric arc furnace turns scrap metal into steel alloy for automobiles, consumer products, and infrastructure such as pipes and bridges. This is a sorting facility. We are all familiar with sorting as we put bottles aside for funding drives. Do not mistake sorting for recycling. Sorting is labor intensive. Recycling is energy intensive. This steel recycling plant runs 24 seven without reliable clean energy. A closed loop society becomes impossible. Most people don't understand everything you look at, touch, feel, anything is tangible. There's energy behind it, a lot of it. That was one thing that always attracted me about the notion of exploring space. I'm an aerospace engineer by training. I went to Georgia Tech, got my master's degree there. Now I spent 10 years working at NASA. This is the kind of community I was thinking of. You know, if you were gonna live on the moon or Mars, there was no pit over here and pit over there. Every atom of nitrogen or oxygen or hydrogen became precious to you. And when I would tell people, why were we doing NASA? That was the most effective thing, it was the whole idea of recycling and what we would learn from exploring space. What prevents us from doing that right now on Earth? I mean, why do we have to go to space to learn how to be really, really good recyclers? Why don't we recycle like that on Earth? It's energy, you know, energy has to be really, really cheap, or the penalty has to be really, really bad. Now in space, the penalty was really, really bad. If you didn't recycle, you ran out of air and water. But on the ground, you need to have really, really cheap energy. I worked a lot of my career in solar power systems. It's just that I'm a lot more aware of their limitations. The moon orbits the Earth once a month. For two weeks, the sun goes down and your solar panels don't make any energy. It's easy to forget about that in our world here on Earth because we're so abstracted from our energy sources. Food is at the grocery store and that we flush the toilet and the waste goes somewhere where somebody takes care of them. And we don't really think about the, the flow of energy that makes all of this possible. With the energy generated, we can actually recycle all of the air, water, and waste products within the lunar community. In fact, doing so would be an absolute requirement for success. We could grow the crops needed to feed the members of the community even during the two-week lunar night using light and power from the reactor. It kind of was this microcosm that made it easier for me to understand the bigger picture that we do have going on here on Earth and how we can make that, that bigger picture better, how we can enhance our quality of life on Earth. 
We're still going to need liquid fuels for vehicles and machinery. We could generate hydrogen by splitting water and combining it with carbon harvested from CO2 in the atmosphere, making fuels like methanol, ammonia, and dimethyl ether, which could be a direct replacement for diesel fuels. Imagine carbon neutral gasoline and diesel, sustainable and self-produced.